Dubai, one of the richest places in the world, a landscape built on technological innovation. But human rights groups say these new advancements hide a darker side. I've come to meet the country's best known human rights activist. The feeling of being watched is horrible. You cannot move, so you lose your freedom. It's a violation of one's privacy. It's like having a stranger in your bedroom. Ahmed used social media to highlight abuses by the UAE government. Months after meeting Ahmed, he disappeared. Weeks later, his family discovered he was being held in solitary confinement without charge in Al Sadr prison in Abu Dhabi. The government says his crime was using social media to spread false and misleading information. But we've discovered that the UAE has the power to monitor his private communications too. In fact, it has the power to monitor all of its people, all of the time. We don't know if Ahmed was targeted, but what we do know is that the UAE bought an incredibly sophisticated mass surveillance system that can hoover up all the communications of all its citizens and keep them for years. But the technology is developed in a surprising place. BAE is Britain's largest arms manufacturer and developer of the technology here in Denmark. Around the back, two large satellite dishes. An employee wants to know what we're doing. What's the reason you're filming? Do you know who we make cybersecurity for? No, that's what we want to know. Yeah. Who do you make cybersecurity that's, that's for? That's why we don't answer you. It seems very secretive, whatever it is. It's a weapon manufacturer. And, and, and by that, you will know that being a weapon manufacturer, they're not going to say anything. And, and so that's the policy. They refuse to talk about what they make here, but we managed to track down a former employee who worked on the system, which BAE calls evident. You'd be able to intercept any internet traffic. If you wanted to do a whole country, go ahead. You could pinpoint people's location based on cellular data. You could follow people around. They were quite far ahead with voice recognition. They were capable of decrypting stuff as well. Our research found that BAE hadn't just sold its technology to UAE, but also a number of countries, many of them accused of serious human rights violations, including Saudi Arabia, Algeria and Morocco. Critics argue that Britain and BAE should not be selling military equipment to repressive governments. If one looks at British arms export law, which covers all sorts of military equipment and training and services, no export license is supposed to be granted if there is a strong chance that the sale of that equipment will increase the likelihood of the breaking of international humanitarian law. This is BAE's London headquarters. We've been told that if a potential sale poses any big ethical questions, they're debated here. We want to ask BAE about another discovery that we've made that not only poses questions about ethics, but about national security as well. We found out that Evident has a further top secret capability, decryption. Decryption, also known as cryptanalysis, is a powerful tool that can read the contents of our communications, even if they've been encrypted for security. This decryption capability is considered so vital to our national security that its export is supposed to be tightly controlled. The British government has denied export of a similar technology to its close ally Australia, yet BAE has sold this kit to the Middle East. We've discovered that the British government told the Danish government they'd refuse an export license for the cryptanalysis on the basis of national security. The suggestion is that a country could use the software to get access to Britain's own communications. Well, 
well, once you have um, sold equipment to someone, they can probably do with it what they want. You take the case, for example, of an Arab country which wants to buy bulk cryptanalysis equipment, supposedly for its own law enforcement purpose. Now, suppose that they have embassies in London, in Washington, in Paris and in Berlin, right? What's to stop them from putting bulk surveillance equipment in our cities and then using the cryptanalysis equipment to decipher all the mobile phone calls that they hear in London or Paris or Washington or Berlin? Despite Britain's objections, the Danish authorities approved the export to the UAE. The Danish Foreign Ministry turned down our request for an interview. In a statement on the export of cryptanalysis equipment, they told us, if the export might prejudice its essential security interests, then an export authorization will not be granted. Based on Danish export licenses, BAE has also made other sales of its cryptanalysis software through Denmark to Oman, Qatar, Morocco and Algeria. The British government says all exports are evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis and will refuse any licenses where there is a clear risk the technology might be used for internal repression. In a statement, BAE says their technology plays a crucial role in combating terrorism and insists they're fully compliant with all export regulations. The BBC has asked a response from the government of the UAE, Qatar and Saudi Arabia. It has not yet received any replies. It's impossible to know if any of these governments who purchase the systems are actually using them. But surveillance tools have become essential in the fight against crime and terrorism. BAE has now put this power in the hands of foreign repressive governments, and the consequences for democracy and civil liberties could be devastating. Noel El-Makhafi, BBC News.